started the war. A lot of people like to say, this might start a race war. But we would like to say, the race war started when he bust the first black man upside the head in Africa and drug us over here in chain. Who is the real criminal? Who is the real gangbanger? Hey, what up world? Truth about Tupac movement. Truth about police. Truth about Texas. Truth movements worldwide. It's your boy, Asher Underwood. I'm very honored, very happy to be here right now with the man Rakim Balagoon. Peace, family. Peace mm. to you, brother. The Huey Newton Gun Club, yes. Dallas, Texas. You remember when Pac said, two shots in the dark, now Huey's dead. I got love for my brothers, right? Huey Newton, revolutionary suicide. It, it changed my life. It changed my perspective. And that's when I really started learning some of the Panther history. And that's from where you guys get the name, the Huey Newton Gun Club. Exactly. The Huey P. Newton Gun Club. Go again. Same old so, again. just down briefly, uh, Rakim, if you could, maybe a little history about you and a little history about your relationship to the gun club okay. and how it came about. Pretty much, I grew up here in Dallas, Texas, a regular guy from Oak Cliff. Um, you know, played sports, it was a, involved in extracurricular activities. Um, you know, no different than the average small Joe that you have seen, you know, in the community. Um, you know, while I was in the Marine Corps, um, after I graduated high school, um, I was able to, you know, get some training on combat and just uh, certain situations, scenarios, and things of that nature. At the same time, while being in the Marine Corps, I was experiencing, um, you could say, direct racism and some of institutional racism. And so that's what kind of brought, you know, really woke me up into you know, revolutionary culture and things of that nature. Uh, immediately when I got out, um, I was involved in mixed martial arts. I was doing cage fighting in Memphis with a league called Cage Assault. Um, you know, uh, I was very passionate about it, uh, especially growing up as a martial artist. Um, when I moved from Memphis here to Dallas, Texas, I met up with some of my comrades that I actually grew up with that I've been knowing since, you know, yay high, you know, and I found out, man, they was on the ground here, you know, uh, putting in work, um, having numerous initiatives. If it that range from food, clothes, and shelter program for the homelessness, each one teach one for um, the children, um, as well as know your rights for the adults, and just numerous programs. This organization is called Gorilla Mainframe, so I joined. You know, I was bright eyed, bushy tailed to join, and from there. You know, um, I, I put in work. I tried to be as consistent and dedicated as possible. I was eventually promoted to a couple of positions to the position I am now, the chief. Um, since being chief, um, I've came up with some programs myself to implement. Um, and from there, we started the coalition, um, the Huey P. New and Gun Club coalition with the New Black Panthers here in Dallas, Texas. Gotcha. So what year did that that happened actually in uh, 2014 to be exact. You know, um, it started in Hemp Hill, Texas to be exact, you know, uh, with the new Black Panthers actually going down there. That's and, the murder of Alfred Wright. Yes, exactly. The murder of Alfred Wright in Hemp Hill, Texas. The new Black Panthers went down there to protest it and um, they did open carry. Uh, we had a um, uh, we had some comrades with them as well, Gorilla Mainframe. We sent some with them for support. And it went well, you know. And so we realized that, you know, using the weapon as a propaganda tool is a way to where we can raise consciousness amongst the uh, people, hmm. you know, because uh, we understand that this culture of resistance must be promoted at all costs. But at the same time, you know, it's kind of hard to promote a culture of resistance when you're doing things like feeding the homeless, positive things, because the media cares less about that. Nobody wants to even give that any attention. But when you get some black men, especially some black men in their 20s, you know, 20s and early 30s, walking around with assault rifles, it brings a lot of attention. Yeah. And, you know, you have media 
groups um, chime in from all across the world to you know figure out what do these guys have to say mm. and so what our message is our message is self-defense is one of the most natural important things that someone can do hmm. you know and, and we promote self-defense through legal ways through understanding your gun laws your gun rights things of that nature um, due to police terrorism being such an epidemic here in this country that it would come to that point where we pretty much tell people hey we got to get organized we got to defend ourselves we have to start doing things such as police accountability groups, cop watch, patrols, numerous things because the people that our tax dollars fund, we can't trust them. Their integrity is it's no longer good, mm. you know. Real deal. And you called it what it is, police terrorism, as we've been seeing across the country. And, you know, um, the uh, I think also what you said is very powerful, that the use of the weapon is clearly important for self-defense but it also is a propaganda tool it's mainly a propaganda tool because <clears throat> unfortunately <clears throat> hmm. just like we saw in when Tupac you know was around and during his days you know whenever he was um, showing himself in an aggressive kind of um, street thuggish way that's when he got more attention versus when he was having intellectual deep conversations people wasn't interested in what me fuck it because motherfuckers love it exactly exactly and so it's the same concept you know we have to you know seize the time and hey if if we can't if we can't do it with just doing regular activity then we must um, raise consciousness through any means necessary. When police terrorism, when when they get to the point where they're killing children, when they're killing unarmed women, when they're killing unarmed men, and they're killing unarmed elderly folks, and and everybody know it. And the grand juries refuse to indict. <laughs> exactly. You know, so you know it's systematic. It's institutional. Yep. Also, you know it's. It's terrorism. We we look at it no different how France looked at the gunman. Hmm. You know, when you when we see a police officer in our community, we immediately get scared. You get tightened up. You you, you can't breathe. You're adrenaline. And, and and you could be as innocent as I don't know what. But just due to the fact that you know you're a young man um, and someone in hip hop culture, it automatically makes you. Guilty. I mean, even just as a young white man in mm -hmm. hip hop culture, you know, it, it's not just the black people that's experiencing it. You know, we experience it more at an alarming rate, but it, it's across the board. Right. But one thing I noticed is media; they pick and choose the cases they bring attention to. That's true. Cases that are somewhat questionable, mm -hmm. like uh, like Mike Brown, for example, because mm -hmm. they have him on. Um, camera stealing um, cigars, right. uh, supposedly, right. uh, allegedly stealing cigars. You know that's the that's the case that you know gets all the media attention. That's in CNN, MSNBC, twenty four seven. But the the cases where it's just clear, outright, blatant murder. You know, um, it it doesn't get played. You know, like for example, I noticed when police terrorism happened to somebody that's white. You know, um, some of the things that the white community says is, hey, why media is not covering this? Why is media is not covering this? Well, we obviously know that the thing is, they want to make this thing seem like police versus black people. Right. They're not being truthful how police terrorize white people. I remember a case in California happened about two or three years ago. An elderly um, white lady was driving on the freeway, on the highway in California, and and she pulled over and a and police officer eventually saw her and pulled behind her and asked her, you know, was she okay? And she said, I'm fine. I, I don't need your help. But he continued to assist to ask her questions and things of that nature. And he eventually came to the point where he wanted her to get out of her car and she refused to. And he tased her and killed her. And it was an 80 year old something white lady, you yeah, know, and what they used to justify that was that she had THC in her system. Right, of course. That was probable cause for her death. Same with Sandra Bland. Oh, she had THC in her system. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's that's why she 
killed herself in the jail because she had THC right. in her system. Of course. Right. Tell me about the the merging of the uh, GMF with the Black New Black Panther Party here in Dallas to form the Huey Gun Club. Can can you speak a little about uh, yes. the Huey? I mean the the New Black Panthers, their relationship or the difference between the New Black Panthers and the original Black Panthers, and then there's also the New African right. Panthers, right? There's like a couple of different Panther organizations, and you right. got regional difference. What what's unique about the Texas chapter of the New Black Panthers. And well, for one, I don't know if you know, but back in 89, the New Black Panthers started here in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, which is the organization is national, and, and I've even heard that it was uh, possibly international. Mm -hmm. But they started here in Dallas, Texas in 89. And one thing about the group that's here in Dallas and here in Texas, um, they, they are a little bit different than the national group, um, they they maintain you know the roots from when it started from '89 versus um, some of the groups that went on to Atlanta mm -hmm. and other places. Um, also, some of the things that are different is you know the, they they did have a separation, mm -hmm. and so you know the 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 party that's here in Dallas is called mm -hmm. the People's New Black Panther Party. Okay. And so that's who we in solidarity with. You nice. know, but. What are some of the immediate objectives that are that you see as like realistic? Let's say right, in the right. in the next election, next five years, four mm -hmm. or five years. Like what what do you think are some of the objectives that are reasonable that you already have maybe some traction with? Mm -hmm. Well, one one of the things that we're most one of the most important things to us is building a culture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we want to build a culture within the black community of self-defense, right. of, of knowing your rights for guns, knowing um, gun knowledge. Um, not just we just don't want people, um, black people, to have guns. We want responsible black people to have guns that will um, um, act responsible. Um, also, our goal is to build a stronger culture of through activity of having um, shooting training. Um, at not only just training, but um, eventually we can move to the form of friendly competition. You know, like they have three gun competition and things of that nature where, you know, black people could feel comfortable, um, you know, doing things that we have viewed as white from previously. Um, also, the goal is to build um, black training institutions um, outside the Huey P. Newton Gun Club, forest businesses, you know, mm. ranges, private property, mm. uh, where we can go teach people how to shoot, hunt, trap, fish, um, survival concepts, mm. you know, um, just like in Hurricane Katrina. Mm. Um, if we would have had a Huey P. Newton Gun Club and Hurricane Katrina, we could have saved a lot more people. Um, number one, so many people have dehydrated. Uh, we one thing we do in the Huey P. Newton Gun Club, we understand how to purify our water, you know, primitively. Um, also, um, we also understand how to start fire without um, lighter and matches, things of that nature, you know, to keep warm or to cook food or to purify water with um, with, with fire. Basic um, survival skills. Exactly. How to build shelter, mm -hmm. you know, how to go trap small game mm -hmm. you know how to do uh, fish with very um, little to limited resources you know things like that those are the stuff that we're promoting you know um, and and two we're, we're trying to get people to not be so um, dependent on you know the police department mm -hmm. you know that's the whole point of having guns and things in nature to when something happened to community the community could deal with it internally yeah you know I found I was I was I found the uh, the Vice article mm -hmm. uh, was really informative. There was a lot of good information in the Vice article, and I found that uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting is, you know, uh, the police chief um, David Brown. David Brown. So David Brown, I found it interesting. Okay, well Dallas has a black police chief, and then I learned in that article that Dallas also has uh, a, a black DA. Mm -hmm. And yet, there's still 
Well, this, actually, it's, we have a white DA currently right now, Susan Hawk. Okay, so the but the one that just came out of office. Yeah, this is Attorney Craig Watkins, and, Craig and Watkins. he was there for a while. Right. So, so I found an interesting one, and in his he gave support to the organization uh, in I guess his article or in one of the statements he made about the Huey Gun Club about you know you guys are what you guys are doing is perfectly 100% legal. Uh, within your constitutional rights, within mm -hmm. the state rights of Texas, all that sort of stuff. And then I didn't know that the police chief, his son, was killed mm -hmm. in 2010 in a police-related shooting incident. Yes, police terrorism. And that there was a couple of town meetings that were called, and yet the article just pointed out it's still black and brown people are getting killed at like 29 times the rate of... Right white people being mm -hmm. killed by police right so what do you think I mean what what does that say about kind of the complexity of the system when some white folks are say well Dallas has a black police chief like you know what why you know like and uh, and they support the Huey Gun Club like what what is what what, is, what does it mean what's the indictment of the, of the system I guess if you will when you talk about institutional racism mm -hmm. that even within an environment of a black police chief and a black president mm -hmm. whereas Zayed Malik point out was, oh you're in America what your black people are free you know all, all of this is long in the past like what do you think is why don't so many people get it I and mean, we've talked about the media obviously the media picks and chooses how its cases but right. what, but what is it institutionally that is is so rotten to the core it seems that black and brown men and particularly youth are being killed at such alarming rates and mm -hmm. even when the black police chief we can't get this violence under control why why is that well one is is it's for the propaganda you know um but, but, you know they they constantly discredit us in that same media that they um portray the um, police um, killings in, you know. <laughs> when you think about, you know, prior to Mike Brown and all that, you think about shows like First 48, mm -hmm. how it pretty much make young black men and women or brown um, men and women dehumanized and seem like just savage killers. And inherently you know? more violent. Exactly, you know, especially when a lot of the cases, somebody would die over pity, you know, differences. You know, so people watch that stuff, and in and, and, and their mind, they see this guy with a t-shirt, baggy pants, Timberland boots, whatever. And so, you know, let's say hypothetically speaking, when they're at the mall and they see somebody dressed similar to that, they they admire, oh, he's a killer just like him. I need to wash my purse. I need to make sure this person go a totally different direction. You know, uh, mass media has a a lot to do with the propaganda, how they present us, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, websites like World Star Hip Hop has mm -hmm. a lot to do with that, you yes. know. They, they 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 constantly show a whole bunch, show us in Street violent. fights and mm -hmm. just constant. The yeah. Along, and you know, along with um, this new corporate hip hop, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, they, they promote guys like Chief Key, guys, you know, who really don't have no real message and it's just destructive, you know, cultural suicide uh, music. Yeah. You know, so that's how I, and today, you know, we can get gunned down um, in front of 50 cameras, unarmed, you know, innocent, and people would still play semantics on Fox News. Yeah. Were you innocent, or right. did you deserve to die that day? Right. It's almost like I just can't believe, like you know, one of the things we talk about is Texas new open carry law. But just recently, like Tamir Rice, it, you know, there's all this cement, like this wordplay and media trickery of, you know, the pellet gun looked like a real gun, mm -hmm. and. He was, you know, how old was Tamir Rice? He 12. was 12 years old. Yeah. He looked like an adult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he looked like an adult with a pellet gun that looked like a real gun. Right. But he was in an open carry state. Exactly. He was in an open carry state. So right. if you're telling me that he he looked like a, a, a legal adult, a black male that's a legal adult with a real gun, you can't just roll up and shoot him. Right, right, right. right? So it's like the, even that part of the, like those parts of the conversations are, are not covered by media and people don't even think. So in saying that, what are the hopes and or the concerns 
in your community and with the Huey Gun Club and, and the, the, the Panthers with Texas now having open carry? Well, one of the hopes and concerns is that um, the people in our community that's doing it, um, that they do it responsibly, um, you know, to make sure that we can be able to police our own community. Um, that's one of the things we're big on. Um, you know, here at P. Newton Gun Club, we support um, cop watch and criminal watch a lot, you know. Define criminal watch. Okay, criminal watch is the way we could police our own community. Let's say hypothetically speaking, right? Um, you know, we, if, let's say we have apartments and it's pretty late at night and we see somebody um, suspicious you know walking around the apartment it looks like they're going to break in a car or a house or maybe something else mischievous um, what we believe is that we can do investigation ourselves and things of that nature versus when you call the police and say hey I have a suspicious black guy walking around right. well guess what here in Oak Cliff we know there's what thousands means. of suspicious black guys and the innocent guy who just caught the train caught the bus home walking home ending his shift he could be pulled over and possibly killed right. and so what we try to do is get the community to rely on and depend on itself and not only in just um, self-defense, but we promote other things like, you know, group economics, you know. Uh, we, 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 we promote um, um, independent schools. You know, we, we promote numerous things that's independent and not dependent on the state. Has there been any, like, negative uh, blowback to the Huey Gun Club? Has there been any hate mail? Is it all positive responses? Like, what are the type of responses that you get from the people? Well, you know, the people have really showed how much they appreciate us and what we're doing. Um, we have received appreciation from original Black Panther, um, from other people in the movement, from other groups. We have received it from the people in our community here and on the, to the very street that we patrol. Um, we have had elderly women approach us, give us hugs with an AK-47 in our arms, you know, and you know, this has been a very, um, it's been a very sensational experience, you know. Um, now, of course, you have a few of your naysayers, you know. You, but uh, it, it wouldn't be universal if we didn't, you know. Um, now, we do have the guy, I believe, I can't remember his chump name. His name, what's this coward name? John Grism from Open Carry, Texas. Okay. Now, he did threaten us and say he has a bullet for us. Okay. Because, um... He felt that we was threatening his police, in which we wasn't threatening his police. We were just, um, we was protesting police terrorism, which he would never be able to understand. This was in a, part a particular incident? Um, in Austin, in Austin. Uh, South by Southwest, uh, 2015. Uh, we actually had a West Coast group come down here and join us. Uh, whenever you get a chance, uh, it would be good for you to link up with them on uh, the Black Riders. Black Riders. Out there, um, you know, they're in L.A., they're on the Bay Area, Oakland. Um, they're pretty much our brother organization. Um, a gentleman named General Taco, he's over it. Um, you know, they came down here, they drove all the way down here from the Bay Area just to be a part of this open carry march. And, and this is the particular video, I don't know if you've seen, the Alex Jones cover. Leanne McAdoo reporting for Infowars.com. I'm out here at South by Southwest and we just saw some tweets on Twitter. People were saying that the Black Panthers are out here doing an open carry march. Uh, so obviously we got to go try and find these guys and of course see what the people out here at South by Southwest think about a bunch of guns in their face. When he covered us, Alex Jones tried to, well his uh, journalist tried to put us directly against the police by going asking police provocative questions about us you know in which the police responded hey everything they did was legal within their rights you know so you know we we had no problems out of them what do you guys think about that do you think that's setting the right tone what do you think i know what i think but are you guys I mean do you appreciate some of the messages there or I know you guys are okay with the open carry. They, I mean, I, you well, are. We're just here to keep everybody safe. Keep, That's yes. That's all we do. Do you we feel like no that? Opinions. Do you feel feel like that further divides the, the the people against the police and what the job that you all do to protect? 
No. Yes. Oh, no. No. No comment. Nobody seems divided. You know, so pretty much, man, this, you know, Open Carry Texas and its leader have tried to oppose us due to the fact that we disagreed with them in the past. Because Open Carry Texas is pretty much a white, um, patriotic, open carry group here in Texas. And they wanted to go to the Fifth Ward in Houston and, and open carry in a black community and a group of white militants. For what? And, um, he wanted to educate us on our gun rights. By going to do an open carry demonstration exactly. in the black community. Exactly. To promote open carry. Exactly, supposedly. You know, um, me, I, I don't think that was legitimate. Um, and, you know, we arranged a meeting. Uh, our representatives and, and as well as our affiliates arranged a meeting with them. And, you know, we totally disagreed. We felt like that, you know, what they were doing was provocative. And, and, and from there on, you know, he, you know, opposed us. And we didn't know it was that serious until after we went down to Austin during South by Southwest. Uh, 2015 um, and did our open carry and we, we actually went to the um, Capitol and, and, and open carried in front of the Capitol and you know about time you know I say a day or so later you know we see articles because different um, sites actually covered covered what we did and kind of corresponded with him and we see articles where he said where he has a bullet for every single one of us with our name on it you know, if we ever try to threaten police. Hmm. And so, you know, but what's important is the community. The community love us, they support us, they respect us, you know, they provide us with resources and things of that nature. And you know, it, it's definitely uh, uh, an experience that I can't even describe, you know, to when people in your community see you open and carry, you know, for them to say, you know, right on, or they come out their way, or come drive out their way, just to come say some positive, motivating things, you know, um, to have that type of support, you know. Yeah. Um, has there been uh, has there been talk of like people wanting to replicate what you guys are doing here in other places? Have has there been talks of expanding into other states, oh, yes. other regions? Yes. Like, how is that? Um, you know, and I want to say in Alabama, mm -hmm. there's a group called SAP, which is an acronym. S A P P stands for Stop a Police Plan, a mm -hmm. big plan, a police plan, however you want to put it. And they do open carry. They educate people on their gun rights, which they they're on Facebook. You get a chance to follow them. Um, there, there are, are, are numerous groups that came up, you know, and and you know, some of them, um, you know, they do it for different reasons, you know. Um, there are other black gun groups that they might not do open carry, but they do train institutional training. Mm -hmm. um, that particular group is a Sasafo. Um, they're one of um, the gun clubs that, you know, we get our motivational from because, you know, they was um, in existence prior to our existence, right. you know, and, you know, there there there's some pretty good um, operators that come out that gun club. And so there are numerous groups that are doing open care, even here in Dallas. You know, I, I saw a little protester groups, which was just mainly doing ununiform protesting to having a few of their people come and open carry but there has been certain you know um it's a gift and a curse as well you know um different white groups are starting to counter protest um anti-police terrorism protests with open carry now you have a group called back the blue um, we did a protest for mike brown and they showed up pretty much 20 white guys and full 782 gear um you know what explain what 782 gear well pretty much tactical gear you know they you know wearing tactical gear um you know from chest rigs with the vest you know with numerous magazines and you know with ar-15s ar-10s you know and try to intimidate you know uh, diverse um, culture um, anti-police 
uh, protesters, mm -hmm. you know, by their counter protesting. And so at this point, we're going to the, so we're moving to where the protesters feel like they have to arm themselves mm -hmm. now because these groups, these different militia groups, Take Back Texas and all these other trashy groups have, you know, started to go past their, to go past their, to go past where they're supposed to go and and pretty much come into our communities, come into our protests and things of that nature. So it, it is starting to be intimidating and things of that nature. And, and so what when they do things like that, it don't do nothing but support the Huey P. Newton Gun Club. Because right. then that's when they come to us and say, you know what? We're done with this protest and we're willing to uh, step it up a notch. And you know. Could you see the existence in this day and era of a white organization mm -hmm. that does armed open carry protests in mm -hmm. solidarity with the Huey Gun Club versus being trying to intimidate Huey Gun Club. Right, but right, I said, we, right, were, right. We, 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 we grew up, I grew up with guns. Mm -hmm. I've been mm -hmm. shooting guns since I was a yay old. You know right, what I mean? I'm right. a responsible gun holder. I, mm -hmm. I know how to not point a gun. It's, any gun is a loaded gun. You right, know, all the right. different things that you mm -hmm. need to know to be a responsible gun carrier. And I'm sick of seeing my brothers being killed by the police, by exactly. police terrorism. Right, right. And I just, for me, it just injustice anywhere is a threat to justice. Everywhere exactly. racism makes me sick. So as a white man, how, how can I, how is the, what's the best way for me to support your organization, other than what we're doing here, getting the message out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, media is one thing, journalism is one thing, but to actually do the work. To get your hands dirty, Most to put definitely. on the beats, to do the training. Most definitely. Like, do you do you see the potential for that type of solidarity? And yes, so yes, where I definitely, I definitely see that. Um, one, the Hugh, like I said, Hugh P. New Gun Club is it's a coalition, and we consist of different organizations of different ideologies, hmm. and and some of the ideology even kind of um, you know bounce heads, bump heads, you know. But it's the solidarity of uh, freedom is what we want. Um, well, we we first of all, let me address Hugh P. Newton Gun Club. Hugh P. Newton Gun Club have in the past have worked with other uh, uh, people of color, such as the uh, Indigenous People Liberation Party, uh, which is a brown organization that's here um, in Dallas. Uh, but like I said, we're a coalition now. Gorilla mainframe. We don't believe in prejudice. We don't say racist because it's impossible for us to be racist. We don't have a system that we own that em employs anybody. Racism but prejudice conveys power. Exactly. Power we don't have no power, right? Copy. So we don't believe in being prejudiced. Now, at the same time, now if you know, we 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 see our, we understand race and class. Yes. And with, with political education, that's some of the things we cover. Also, history is our best teacher. History has taught us about uh, women such as Marilyn Buck. Mm. Uh, this lady here, Sada Shakur. You know, she played a major role in her liberation. She was a white woman, you know. And, and, and you know, they, when they went and broke out of Clinton uh, Correctional Facility in New, uh, in New Jersey, you know, she was the uh, one of the getaway drivers, you know, and that's why Asada Shakur is in Cuba right now right. because of her. And, you know, she wound up getting arrested for that and did all her time in prison, you know, and pretty much when she got out, she pretty much just died a few months later. So we definitely understand, just like Chairman Fred Hampton said in Chicago um, Black Panther Party, he said, you beat racism with solidarity. That's right. That's the best way to beat racism. Now, we understand that certain groups are separate. And, and we don't knock them for that. But we understand there needs to be groups that are separatists. And they can be separatists and not prejudiced. They're just separatists because they feel like, hey, as black people in America, we don't have a culture. Our culture was stolen. So we have, we're, right now, we're in the midst of building our culture. Right. You know, we and and so they have to be separatists to be able to build a culture that that has less influence as possible. They're already influenced enough being born and raised here in America. Then you have groups like Gorilla Mainframe, 
who work with those groups and who is willing to work with other groups as well. Yeah. You know, and pretty much what we do is we develop a system and a grid of resistance. Hmm. So yes, we are willing to work with exactly. Like we we are willing to um, work with righteous uh, white brothers, righteous um, brown brothers, righteous Asian brothers, and just different. Because the thing about it is this. You know, I always use this as an analogy. You know, I'm sure my comrade is tired of me saying it. In World War II, let's look at Hitler. Do you think Hitler liked the Japanese, the Nazis? You, do you think they, they actually looked at the Japanese as honorable people? You know, based off their ideology? Um, when you look at uh, Mussolini, you know, do you think he actually, how did they view the Italians? But they, they definitely understood that they needed solidarity to accomplish their mission. Mm. Just like the United States had solidarity with, with, um, with, with France, they had solidarity with Britain, and they, and they, and they have numerous solidarity. Israel, we, we, the list go on and on. And this power structure that we're, um, com that we're competing with is a very mass in depth power struggle and just like George Jackson said in the book blood in my eye yeah he said that revolution is doomed but the black revolution is twice as doomed because the thing about it is as you've seen what's been going on in the media you know when you know when what happened when Diverse people, black people, white people, uh, and people of color protested against police terrorism. What they did was the media started pushing this idea of a race war, mm -hmm. you know, to break up the working class right. people, you know, because they got to keep us, as long as we're isolated and not on one accord, you know, we're, we're, it's easy to oppress us. Yeah. So then you go into all this race war. You go into all this. Now you have the Black Lives Matter. When, and every time they show them, it's always provocative. Mm -hmm. and, and even if you're not black, it, it's easy to be insulted by the movement. Because it seems like they're, what they're saying is only black people matter. Versus um, what they're actually saying is, hey, black people are getting killed at an alarming rate. Mm -hmm. And and our lives do matter just like everybody else. Right. You know, but it's the way they promote that because they know as long as we are not seeing eye to eye mm -hmm. and not on one accord, then we're going to fight each other instead of fighting who we need to be fighting. And so that's what we call um, vertical oppression and horizontal oppression. Mm. Um, vertical oppression consists of oppression directly with the state. Mm. You know, horizontal oppression, when you get a group of people who in, in one vicinity with limited resources, mm -hmm. you know, and with solidarity, you know, it's our goal that, you know, blacks, we got to get organized. You know, we, we definitely have to um, get our people on one accord. We have to build a culture that we feel like needs to exist. The resistance of culture of knowing identity. Because that's one of the first steps we have to do is understand identity. And, and let's say for us, um, people, uh, let's say uh, non-melanated people, you know, one of the best things that they can do is educate their people and their culture and their community. Because a lot of um, white people their prejudices are racist out of ignorance. Out of ignorance. And on that note, make sure you check out your boy Asher Underwood's Truth About White People on my page, AsherUnderwood.com. I just released a video called The Truth About White People Most definitely. where I talk about melanin. And I talk about how, you know, melanin is, is simply a, a biochemical uh, part of our anatomy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the largest organ of the body, which is the skin. Mm -hmm. And people completely forget that this, the, the skin is not just like a, a drape, like a freaking sheet or whatever that you throw over your bones, but it's the organ that houses your entire body. Exactly. And while you may have way more melanin mm -hmm. than me in the skin, mm -hmm. our internal organs also have melanin. Yes, our and kidneys your brain. and the brain, mm -hmm. the neuromelanin and all that sort of stuff. So when you think about a, a, a system that was built on the prejudice of complexion right and we know that 
you have to be completely ignorant to not understand that the original man and everybody comes from Africa mm -hmm. at one point. So albinism and vitilio, vitilio the, the, mm -hmm. the, the condition that Michael Jackson had, for example, mm -hmm. that causes the loss of pigmentation in the skin, mm -hmm. none of that changes your thought process no. or your ethics or your morals or your ability to form solidarity. Right, right. And so to create a system, a supremacy based on complexion is is is, is backwards. You know? right, so right. I, I really feel like it's really important what you said and I, I really salute you as well on your class analysis because that clearly is in line the uh, guerrilla mainframe it, ideology is very yes. in line with the yes, black, we, original we, panther party practice of class analysis right. and vertical and horizontal pressure. we definitely got to take class analysis into consideration you know because you know they'll get black petty bourgeoisie people to sell us on our own demise mm. you know guys like barack obama you know the the, the 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 you know when you think about the 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 black preachers who went and spoke with Donald Trump, mm. and the reason why is because they could be bought off. Mm. They're, they're 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 for sale, you know. And so, whenever you get ignorant people, you know this is what's going to happen. Just like we have, you know, you know we have ignorant people within our community who don't know that they're from Africa, who don't know where. And it's not because of them; it's due to miseducation. I think by miseducation, Lower Hill. But first, the white man was miseducated, then the black man. Because the white man was miseducated to thinking that he was superior, yeah. and, and and he was miseducated to seeing people of uh, melanin as animals and 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 less within. And then once when we was brought over here, we we was miseducation. So education needs to go across the board on uh, all on uh, all paths. Just like when I look at at the sea, um, the uh, the immigrant uh, the immigration protests mm -hmm. and when I see white people and so even certain conservative right-wing Hispanics even say it yeah well this is our country this is this hold up who you think this country belonged to right. before, when the first immigrants came yeah it but to it, Texas belonged to um, Tejas belonged to Mexico right. Mexico uh, Arizona right? New Mexico California you know it's all Spanish names I point that out true about white people too this was all it originally, this is native land. Mm, Let's exactly. be real about it. We're on native indigenous land. Indigenous land. Really, uh, really powerful, powerful, powerful stuff, man. The way I see it is, first come education, which build consciousness, then it moves on to conviction. Mm -hmm. And with that conviction, that's where you know you you come up with guys like yourself and myself as well. You know, to where you say, hey, I see this. I'm enlightened. Um, I'm, I'm aware, um, I'm affected, now I'm convicted to go out there and intervene and I appreciate that you um, provided um, educational propaganda about that because you know it's these days you know it, it's, it's kind of hard to really you know find you know because when you think about like the Panthers right you look at guys like Marlon Brando you know you look at uh, what's the uh, the, the other um, white female uh, workout what that Fonda Jane Fonda Jane Fonda yeah. you um, you know you look at uh, when Angela Davis you know was uh, locked up and um, after that manhunt for her, and she was in jail a white farmer I'm gonna say Bakersfield California put up his form for her to be bonded out mm. at that time you know uh, and right a little bit before that time um, Clinton I'm sorry, not Clinton, but President Kennedy, Kennedy said that we're at a time of, of reducing revolutionary consciousness. Mm. And, and I look at the consciousness not only of just black people, but white people in the 60s versus white people in 2015. Mm. The consciousness have changed. Back then, white people were very radical about Vietnam. They were very radical about racism. Um, you look at colleges like Cal Berkeley, that, that was like the pool of of radical and enlightened people who were had you know different enlightened background no matter if it was Marxism, Mayoism, uh, or whatever their ideology was but they played a major role of helping 
in assisting Panthers with doing what they did in the community from the breakfast programs to numerous things. You know, you're talking about millions of dollars that have been donated. And so for 2015, with the reduce the reduction of consciousness within the white community and to still see people who are the minute few, because I definitely understand, you know, because we definitely have comrades in GML. Um, we have comrades who they might might not be a part of the organization, but they're allies of the organization. They're white as well, and they have supported us through fundraising, through providing resources, um, materials, uh, just uh, it's just a lot of support. And and I watch, you know, as they go door to door and ask for uh, resources and things of that nature with people in their own community, and it's. They have to, it's pretty much, they get to this close to a fist fight. You know what I mean? What you mean? You're bringing these black people in my door. You know, where, where are you talking about? Why taxes pay for them, you know? And so, you know, I know it's not easy and convenient to do that, you know? And just like it's not easy and convenient for me to be anti-police and anti-state. You know, whenever you go against a certain interest and a certain power structure that has been embedded itself you know you pretty much ask for problems so man i give you power for that power to you too brother man this is uh really appreciate your your time i really appreciate what you're doing i appreciate you bringing me in your home oh it's an honor it's an honor man uh you guys need to check out the interview with zay malik from the pan african mm -hmm. connection bookstore we just did that and uh you know now we're here and this is not the end, you know what I mean? The, 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 the protracted struggle and the movement shall continue. And if you need more information or like more information about the Huey Newton Gun Club, where can they get, where's the best source of information if they want to go direct um, to the source? One of the best sources on Facebook, um, you, you can search the Huey P. Newton Gun Club. Um, we actually have a Facebook group. We have a page. Um, you can send a message. Um, also, you can reach out to um, this particular email is um, gmmap77 at gmail.com, gmmap77 at gmail.com, and you know, we'll correspond with you, you know. Check out the possible. links in the description of this video, link to the Huey Newton Gun Club Facebook page. We're going to have to have a talk too because... I do am partners in the graphic design company, so we need to talk oh, about getting oh, you guys yeah. a website. That's yes, no we definitely need that. But uh, for now, you guys hit these links, and if you're in Texas, or if you're not in Texas, find a way to support the Huey Newton Gun Club, whether it's helping with their uh, fundraising activities, if it's helping just by sharing this video on your Facebook page so that people can know uh, the truth about the Huey Newton Gun Club and not what the media or the propaganda machine might be telling you and as you can see the Huey Newton Gun Club is has solidarity and the Gorilla Mainframe solidarity with all peoples that are looking to end the madness that we all see if you see it you know if you're one of the naysayers or if you're one of the negative peoples hey Mm -hmm. Give us a comment. We, we appreciate you bringing attention to the video, but we're going to keep riding because as we say the truth about Tupac, it's not a movie, you joker. It's a movement. Exactly. So log in, you goons. It's not a cartoon either. Shout out to my partner, D-Love. Shout out to all the real riders and the Gs that's doing it. Shout out to Hugh Newton Gun Club. Shout out to the new African Panthers and the people. Black Panther, New Black Panthers. Say, say the name again of the Dallas chapter. The People's, um, the People's Party, New Black Panther Party. The People's Party, mm -hmm. New Black Panther Party, man. Salute you all. Subscribe. Stay tuned. And let's keep it moving, y'all. Salute.